Hello and welcome to the Evo India YouTube channel. It's the end of the week, which of course means it's time for all of the news of the week. Kicking things off has to be MotoGP. Now, just last week, MotoGP successfully completed its first outing in India, and it was quite a raging success, if I'm to be honest. Now, we were there at the MotoGP, and it was a grand spectacle. It's really unreal watching one of the greatest sports in motorsport history find its way to India finally. All us motorsports fans couldn't be happier. And let's give you a quick rundown of what happened in this race weekend. Now, there was a bit of speculation as to whether or not this thing will happen successfully. But credit where it's due, Fair Street Sports did a great job of getting MotoGP in India and everything happened pretty seamlessly towards the end. Now, in terms of the wins that happened, Jorge Martin can pride himself with being the first racer to win at the Tissot Sprint Race in India, the first ever Tissot Sprint Race in India. Now, in terms of the classes that get further broken down for the main feature race on Sunday, Moto3, the victory was taken by Jaume Masaya of Leopard Racing after a really valiant battle with the people behind him. In second place in Moto3 was Kaito Toba of the SIC. 58 Honda team and right behind him was Ayumu Sasaki of the Liqui Moly Husqvarna Intact GP team. Now the race again was a proper nail biter, a lot of position changes and right in the end is when the order changed. So uh, again a very interesting race, you should have seen it if you haven't. Now Moto2 was another real spectacle to see live, again a lot of battle between first, second and third and uh, in fact there wasn't much of a battle for first because right from the get go uh, the race was red flagged in the first lap itself because there was a multiple rider pileup in turn one. So after that, after the position was reset to the qualifying uh, grid, uh, Pedro Acosta of the Red Bull KTM Aho team pretty much dominated right from the start. He went and he maintained his position right till the end. Tony Ablino of the ELF Mark VDS racing team, uh, he put on a stellar show. He started from the from 5th to 6th position and managed to find his way in 2nd position right from the first lap and he pretty much maintained that position for a long time and finished in the 2nd step of the podium and Joe Roberts of the Ital Trans racing team made full advantage of the person in front of him who made a few errors in the last lap and took 3rd position in the Bharat GP. For the main feature race, the main MotoGP race, Marco Bezzecchi put on what a masterclass for everyone out there. From the first lap itself, he took the lead, maintained pace and and towards the end, he was almost 9 seconds clear of the person behind him. 9 seconds in a MotoGP race is a very, very big deal. So hats off to Marco, you made a great win at the first Indian GP. Now right behind him, Francisco Bagnaia was all set to take second place on the podium at the Bharat GP. But around lap 10, he had a slight low side and that pretty much took him out of race contention. Jorge Martin replaced him in second place and a stunning show from Fabio Quattraro of the Yamaha team meant that he finished on the third step of the podium at the first ever Indian Oil Grand Prix of India. Now this weekend was really action-packed. If you weren't there, if you didn't see all the action, make sure you go back and check out the race because it was really a nail-biter. All three classes, the Moto3, Moto2 and MotoGP, they were great. And on that front, MotoGP has been a resounding success to a point where the provisional calendar of the 2024 MotoGP is already out and India is on it. The Indian GP is scheduled to happen from the 20th to the 20th. 2nd of September 2024 uh, so that's already on the provisional calendar and it is going to be the 16th race in the calendar so that's something to look forward to for all the people who may have missed it this year and for all the motorsport fans in general so thumbs up for that. Now, continuing with the motorsport news, there's big news for the Indian motorsport fraternity. Jehan Darwala is now a part of the Maserati MSG racing team in Formula E. Now, this is Formula E's 10th season and uh, Jehan Darwala has secured a spot in the Maserati MSG racing team. Now, this decision comes after Eduardo Motara retired from the MSG team and moved on to the Mahindra racing team just a few weeks back. Now, Jehan Darwala will be joining Max Mueller Gunther in this season. Now, him along with Gunther will also be at the pre-season testing at Valencia at the end of October. Continuing with Formula E news, Mahindra has announced their racing lineup for Formula E. Nick Devry and Eduardo Mordara, who just left the Maserati MSG team, are a part of the racing lineup for Mahindra's Formula E team next year. Now, Devry won the seventh season of Formula E and he's returned back to Formula E after a brief stint at F1 racing for the Williams and the Alpha Tori team. Now, Devry will be joined by Eduardo Mortara, who started his Formula E stint in the 2017-2018 championship and he finished just seven points behind Devry, who won that season. So, 
Exciting news on the Formula E front, especially for Indians as well, and I can't wait to see how this season unfolds. Now, the final bit of motorsport news is, again, a really interesting piece of news, is that TVS has announced their first ever electric bike one make championship. Now, this is the first of a kind in India. TVS has also announced some details of the bike with which they will be hosting this one make championship. Now, the one make championship, it kicks off on September 29th as a part of the fourth round of the INMRC. So that's pretty soon, so it's right around the corner. Now, the bike, it's called the RTE, Race Throttle Electric. That's what TVS is calling it. Now, the bike will be ridden by hand-picked riders. So there are eight riders who will be chosen meticulously by TVS to ride this bike. Um, it's got the highest power to weight ratio in this class. Now it's got a liquid cooled motor and a liquid cooled motor controller. So that's interesting. Now it's got a carbon fiber battery case and that is a stressed member of the entire chassis setup. Uh, it's got custom built BMS. The battery management system is custom built for racing purposes. So efficiency in terms of high range is not necessarily going to be the priority over here. It's a chain driven system of Obviously, so you get the most efficiency of power going to the rear wheel and uh, you get bespoke Olin suspension front and rear which will be adjustable as well. You get a 320mm front disc with Brembo braking, not only the caliper, even the master cylinder is supposedly Brembo. And you get uh, carbon fiber wheels, so quick turning is going to be guaranteed. And Pirelli Super Corsa tires. Apart from that, you also have a carbon fiber fairing, which is claimed to have the lowest drag coefficient. And uh, of course, there's going to be a special TVS livery. There's nothing really in this class, so obviously this is going to be the best. And we can't wait to see what this bike is like and hopefully even maybe ride it someday. But in the meanwhile, all the best to TVS for this new one make championship. And I can't wait to see where this is headed. Now, coming back to car and bike news, let's start off with the cars. Mercedes-Benz India has launched the new G63 AMG, the Grand Edition. Now, this is limited to just 25 units for India. And uh, here's what it gets. Now, it gets this new special color scheme with a lot of gold accents along with matte black treatment all across. Now, this gets a very bespoke livery. It's painted in the exclusive Manufacturer Night Black Mango color. Now, that's what Mercedes calls it, with gold accents. Uh, it's running 22-inch cross-spoke AMG spec alloy wheels, again, that are finished in this gold color to sort of contrast the black that the rest of the body has. You have black seat upholstery with gold inserts, black roof grab handles and black floor carpeting with gold stitching. You get AMG door sill guards with illuminated borders and the passenger side dashboard grab rail which has grand edition embossed on it and uh, now the multifunction steering wheel of course has the G63 AMG badging on it and this new grand edition is going to be priced at 4 crores but that's not the kicker the kicker is the fact that to be able to buy this to be able to be eligible to buy this you need to have either a Maybach or an S-Class or an AMG now powering this AMG is her 4 litre V8 engine that delivers 577 bhp and 815 newton meters of torque and being that this is a G-Wagon it of course has all wheel drive what do you think about this G63? Let us know in the comment section down below. Now continuing with Mercedes, Mercedes AMG has unveiled the 2024 GLC Coupe. Now this is the manufacturer's first SUV Coupe with an AMG e-performance hybrid powertrain. Now there are two variants, there's the GLC 43 formatic Coupe and the GLC 63 SE performance Coupe. Uh, the first one has a 2 litre 4 cylinder engine and it is mated to a 9 speed automatic gearbox. The GLC 43, that the one with the 2 litre engine, that develops 413 bhp and 500 newton meters of torque. And uh, it can deliver a 0 to 100 kmph time in 4.8 seconds and accelerate to a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Now, the GLC 63, it gets the hybrid assistance system, the SE performance system, which adds 201 bhp to the equation. So, the power outputs and torque outputs have gone up to 670 bhp and 1080 newton meters of torque. It has an all wheel drive drivetrain. It gets rear axle steering, it gets an adaptive damping system in the suspension, and you get a choice between 19, 20, or 21 inch alloy wheels and of course you have the latest MBUX infotainment system. Now this should eventually make its way to India. Are you looking forward to that? Do let us know. Rolls-Royce, they have unveiled a bespoke one of one Phantom. Now when Rolls-Royce does a bespoke one of one Phantom, you know it's going to be pretty intense. It's called the Cinque Terre, it's, which is Italian for five lands. Now I'm sorry if I butchered the Italian pronunciation for that, but basically it is an ode to the five villages that are situated on the Italian Riviera. This, this bespoke Phantom, it also 
celebrates the wine making tradition of this area by honoring the various vineyards that overlook Mediterranean. Now the exterior finish of this Rolls-Royce Phantom is something that they're calling Ligurian Blue. That's the exterior color and it's finished in double coach line with navy blue and jasmine. So it's quite interesting to look at and where the actual magic is if you step inside. Now there's a map of Italy on the headliner and that's embroidered with 14,338 individual stitches with five glowing stars that demarcate five of these villages that the name suggests and apart from that you also have grape branch embroidery on the rear doors and each of these pieces comprise of over 9200 stitches that's just mind-boggling now there's also a grape motif on the picnic benches suggesting the wine making tradition and apart from that there's an artwork on the dash that showcases the italian riviera now this is quite something to look at. What do you think of it? Do let us know in the comment section down below. Now moving on to something more accessible. Hyundai has launched the i20 N-Line facelift and the prices start at rupees 9.99 lakh. And the headline figure for this, the headline news is that it finally gets the manual gearbox as an option. The i20 N-Line was always positioned as an enthusiast car and the fact that it now gets a manual gearbox is just pushing that statement further. Uh, it's powered by the same 1 litre turbo petrol engine that makes 118 bhp and 172 newton meters of torque. Again, like I said, you have the new manual gearbox or you can still get the 7 speed DCT option. Now, the 6 speed gearbox, the manual, it has been picked off of the Verna, but because it is mated to the smaller 3 cylinder 1 litre engine, the gear ratios have been tweaked accordingly, so the driving experience should be suited for the i20 N line. Now, in terms of features, you get the standard 6 airbags, electronic stability control, uh, hill start assist. Uh, vehicle stability management, three-point seat belts, and tire pressure monitoring system. You get 16-inch alloys, disc brakes on all four wheels. That's part of the N-Line package. Uh, you get a seven-speaker Bose sound system. And now you also have this new Abyss black color option. Now the i20 N-Line, it will be available in two variants, the N6 and the N8. The manual gearbox is available on both the N6 and the N8. And prices start at 9.99 lakh for the base N6 variant and go up to 12.31 lakh for the top spec N8 DCT variant. What do you think about the fact that the i20 N-Line now gets a manual gearbox? Do you think that was something that was needed or do you think the N-Line was fine either ways? Do let me know in the comment section down below. Now let's start with the bike news. Honda has launched a new sports edition of the SP125. Now differentiating it from the standard SP 125 is merely cosmetics. There's not much going on on the chassis or the mechanicals front, so it's just the cosmetics. Now, the bike has more graphics and decals on the bodywork, and uh, it also replaces the shiny chrome exhaust finish with a more subtle matte finish, something that is associated with a sporty nature. There are also two new color options to choose from it's called Decent Blue Metallic and uh, Heavy Grey Metallic. Prices are Rs 90,567 approximately, that's around 500 odd rupees more than before. And like I said, mechanically the bike remains unchanged. Now the next up is the Bajaj Pulsar N150. So we've always had the N160, which was the sportier variant. Then we had the P150, which was a sort of commuter variant, but with Pulsar DNA. And now we have the N150. Now this is launched at Rs 1.18 lakh X showroom. And uh, this combines the aggressive look of the N160 with the engine from the P150. Now this is the third 150cc in the Pulsar 150 lineup along with the P150 and the Pulsar 150, the standard Pulsar 150. It's powered by a 149.68cc single cylinder engine, power output standard around 14.5 bhp and 13.5 Nm of torque. In terms of features, you get single channel ABS, you get an LED projector at the center with two LED DRLs on the side of the entire headlight unit. You get the same digital instrument cluster that's been borrowed from the N160 which was borrowed from the larger 250s. So, and a USB port and the exhaust is an underbelly unit, it's not a side slung exhaust. And you have three colors to choose from, the racing red, the ebony black and the metallic pearl white. Now the N160 was quite the success story for Bajaj, the P150 not so much. Do you think the N160 will change that? Do let us know in the comment section below and we will get you our first ride report shortly. Now the Charisma, when it launched the XMR210, the new Charisma, they launched it at an introductory price of Rs 1.73 lakh X showroom. Now, now that introductory price has run out and it, the last of it will be seen until October 1st, after which the bike will be priced at Rs 1.79 lakh X showroom. Now you can book the bike at the introductory price till September 30th, but going from October 1st onwards, you will be paying the new 1.79 lakh X showroom price. So the price difference is not much, 6,000 is understandable. and. 
and uh, what do you think about the Char Charisma XMR in general and what do you think about this price upgrade? Do you think it's worth it? Do let me know in the comment section down below. Now the next piece of news comes from Yamaha. Now at MotoGP Bharat, there was a bit of chatter that the R3 and the MT-03 will be launching in December. If so, that's a great thing because the 300 to 400cc segment is really heating up now with bikes like the new Duke, the new Apache RT R310. So it'll be interesting to get a parallel twin engine in this segment. Now the 321cc parallel twin on these Yamahas produces 41 bhp and 29 Nm of torque. You will get the updated KYB upside down forks and also a monoshock at the rear. You get 130mm of travel at the front and 125mm of travel at the rear. You will get dual channel ABS with a 296mm disc at the front and a 220mm rear disc. And there are of course you get LED lights and all of that. Now the R3 is a proper fed sport bike which will be great for track use and touring use whereas the MT-03 is the naked bike which is more for city and a bit of touring and stuff like that. So would you pick these over the rivals that we have in India and what do you think Yamaha should be pricing this at? Do let me know in the comment section down below. The final piece of news for today is the Royal Enfield Himalayan 452. Now there's new news that suggests that what we initially thought is going to be called the Himalayan 450 is now going to be called the Himalayan 452. And uh, now the bike is going to be making its debut in the end of October, so there's not much waiting left to do. But in the meanwhile, we have some information about it. Claims that it's going to be powered by a 451.6 cc engine. Um, and this is going to be Royal Enfield's very first liquid-cooled engine. So it's going to be interesting to see how they manage to take care of that. Apart from that, power output stand at around 39.47 bhp. This will be making it at around 8000 rpm, which makes it roughly 15 bhp more powerful than the current Himalayan. And uh, the wheelbase is claimed to be around 1510 millimeters, so that's fairly long. And the uh, dimensions are on your screen right now. And the curb weight could be around 200 kilos. Now, these are all figures that we can expect. Now, these figures are just something that have come up in a leaked document. There's no guarantee that these are going to be the exact specs of the Royal Enfield Himalayan 452. But if history is anything to go by, these documents have been fairly accurate. And in any case, these are the figures that we were estimating in any case. So, yeah, it's nice to see that Royal Enfield Himalayan is going to be coming out soon. The Himalayan 411 has been around for a while and... Uh, Everyone needs a more powerful ADV. ADVs are all the rage these days and we can't wait to ride this new bike. We will be riding this bike in Manali in the end of October and our first ride reviews will be out shortly after that. So stay tuned for that. And that's been it for the news this week. What was your favorite piece of news? Do let me know in the comment section down below and thanks for watching. Um.